What is going on friends and welcome back to the Minecraft Hub channel. Today we have a very special video. This is the end of season world tour of Zetacraft. We did a world tour a few months ago uh, featuring this server and it was amazing. Now they've come to the end of their season and it's time to get a final wor world tour of this amazing server. Also, just to let you know, my audio wasn't recording during this tour, so every time I speak, this is actually being recorded after the fact of the tour, unfortunately, because my audio just was not recording for some odd reason. Well, almost average. Welcome back to Zetacraft. Yeah, the spawn looks a little bit different. I think when you were last here, we had like two or three pillars up, and now we have quite the spawn hub here. A lot to take in all at once. I I know a few of us are planning to put a chest in front of our statues and in the chest will be our end of season, our ender chest, any of our armor or tools inventory that we had on us at any point in time. And then we're going to have a world download made available here very shortly as well so people can come in and check it out. But uh, yeah, we have reached the end of season one. So this is our end of season world tour. I'm excited to have you go on it. Yeah, this is our spawn hub. The actual design was a collaborative build between several of the Zetas. I believe Mindless, Maya, Time Architect, myself, Shadow Ginger, and Diosil did a lot of the design work in the creative world. And of course, it's raining. It was definitely a complete group build by all of the Zetas and had all the Zetas come in and build their own statues to kind of put their own little thumbprint on the build. And it was nice to have one big collaborative project for sure. Go ahead and head into the nether portal. Now, if you look carefully inside, you'll see that there is a danger zombified pigling farm. Don't walk on the map. <laughs> that, that, is, that is death. And then I think as we walk in our nether uh, hub is finally complete as well. I don't know if we had this under construction when we were last here, but it is so cool to be able to look around and see the whole thing in all eyes. Trying to look at the shopping district of what is different from the last world tour and what is new this time. Ah, uh, yes, the courthouse. <laughs> that that is that is a beautiful exterior building with a half finished interior. The courthouse is definitely the biggest addition to the shopping district. There are a few other changes, but for the most part, it's pretty similar to when we saw it three months ago at the halfway point of the Zetacraft season. The entranceway of this courthouse was done by Geek Squeak and Ricky was supposed to take on the rest of it. Unfortunately though, the season ran out of time and he didn't get a chance to finish up this massive interior. And while most of the shopping district still looks the same, there are some new additions, especially on the interiors of some bases. Uh, like this shop over here now has a diamond and shulker block shulker box floor because they are just so extravagantly rich. Over here, we can also see a new little market area uh, that was built by Time Architect and Cablecraft. Apart from this new market area, this area looks pretty much the same with these Japanese style builds. This amazing cherry blossom tree over here. Eisneroth has his shop over here as well, Fire and Ice, which sells both ice products and also products from the nether. This is a redstone automated bookshop. And then over here we have some mini games and such. This market right here was built by Geek Squeak. He actually sold these little stalls to be used by other people to sell just small little items they had from this area. And then of course we have some of the same shops we were looking at before. But there is one pretty cool thing that has popped up around this entire world. And this is one of Megateka's blobs that has been hopping around all the server. He's got various ones set up at different people's bases and it's basically a request for free items. Megateka built these around the server and actually collected a ton of free items from other players just by building cool little blobs in the shopping district and also people's bases. Another new build in this area is the Wisdom Birch right here. This actually used to be the auction house which we saw in the last tour. So this is an interesting little build where it's a wishing well tree where if you throw in a diamond, it gives you a wish. And if you throw in anything that isn't a diamond, like that rocket per se, we catch Megateka's minimalistic shop on fire. 
And now we start getting into some of the Zeta craft bases. The first one we check out today is Time Architect's Castle, and this thing is absolutely massive and looks amazing as well. He terraformed the entire mountain beneath it and built up this amazing castle on top. And the last time we looked at it, the whole exterior of it was pretty much already done, but now we also have a finished interior on it as well. And this is actually the first time that I've been inside it since he finished the interior. So I'm excited to see this as well. <laughs> but he has gone and fully decorated the interior of this castle now which must have taken hours and I'm going to get totally lost in here. The interior of this castle was amazing. It was complete with barracks. It had a throne room. It had beautiful walls to go out and stand on and see the rest of the shopping district area. It's got a dining hall and just so many different areas and floors that were so cool. It was great seeing that Time Architect had gone ahead and finished up the interior of this castle. So here we have Geeks Week's Hibbity Hobbity, This Is My Property Hobbit Village. Exactly. Hello. Welcome. Welcome back. <laughs> not, not much. I just made a mountain in the castle. <laughs> <laughs> So Geek Squeak's base, for the most part down here, is pretty much the same. If you remember from the Last World Tour, it's a perspective style base where he doesn't want you to fly around. It's supposed to seem very large and uh, you're just supposed to be a small hobbit in this area. Now what he did change was this massive mountain and the build on top of it. He decided he needed a backdrop to really enforce this perspective. So he went ahead and he custom terraformed that mountain and the build on top of it. The summer homes that he also built for the other Zetas have gone through some changes as well as most of these Zetas have gone and decorated the inside of theirs now. This is my holiday home. I've got three separate bedrooms up on this first floor here. Uh, three different styles for the colors of the rooms. Come on downstairs, I've got the main dining room. Kind of game room over here with some tables for standing. We then went around and checked out the rest of these little vacation homes and I gotta say the interiors on these things were amazing. This one we're in right here is Dio Sills, uh, really cool pinkish in interior, got uh, the kitchen bed, storage room of course, and then we go ahead and find some other really weird things like some overcooked meat. Uh, the next house would be Maya's, which I think the last time you were here we were cooking up some meat but it has been cooking for a long time, so it's kind of turned into coal, and yeah, you know, what? if coal is under pressure. And next up, we have Time Architect, who did an incredible job designing the interior details of this place. I've never seen really this much of a detailed interior. Time definitely did an amazing job working on this place. Next up, we checked out Mindless's, who Mindless actually did an incredible job and did something super interesting by building a speakeasy inside of this thing. So down here, it's got a hidden bar. I think this still looks very hobbity, but he also made it a very cool bar. I think it was the Skull Bar is the name of it. This place is so cool, so well designed, and it's definitely one of my favorite of these vacation homes. But this turned out I think really this is cool. I think this is my, one of my favorite builds uh, on the server that I did. And I see I still missed a little bit of trapdoors here, but... He did a great job with this geek. This looks really cool. And this is the stuff I do on live streams. It's just, just... I go live on Twitch and then... Thank you. Yeah, I like blending in blocks and see if I can find colors that really contrast each other. It's still a bit messy, but... I think it worked out really well. Definitely for a backdrop. Oh, for sure. A oh, nice aerial view of your Hobbit village here. Exactly. You can see uh, uh, even how small it is. It looks big now if you look uh, down upon it. That is really cool. You did a great job, Geek. Thank you. Don't look at the back of the mountain. It's definitely done. Don't you worry about that. After checking out Geek's base, we went to go and check out Ricky's base, which was just along this path, which turned into something truly amazing. You may remember this from last time, uh, this large statue at the front and then the valley behind it. Well, it is completely different now. So as we come around this corner here, you can see the guardian statue protecting the valley. And then I kind of made a tree. Just, just a little guy, <laughs> no big deal. 
And I have it all set up, so I want the first view of my valley to really be from this bridge overlooking it. This valley has changed so much. Of course, the huge, incredible tree with the custom-made lanterns hanging from it is amazing, but even this valley has changed a lot. There's new buildings, new statues, and so much going on in this base now. And the whole valley has now been lit up, spawn-proofed, so theoretically, the light levels are such that mobs should not spawn in the valley anymore. I think. And then as we keep walking around, started to fill the valley up with a bunch of buildings and started putting some more little trees all throughout the valley. I've got this windmill over here that I really like how the windmill turned out. And on the back of the valley, you might notice there's something else over there. The magic of the valley has brought to life a golem with a tree growing out of his back. So he's just walking towards the valley right now and it just kind of closes in the full scale of the valley by adding him in there. And then if we keep taking the loop around, I've got two more guardian statues in the valley itself. A little amethyst garden growing, as, as you do. And I tried making buildings at all sorts of random angles as well, just to kind of add a little bit more interest to the valley and that's absurdity, for lack of a better term. The last time that we toured this valley, he had just covered it in the warped Nilium, but there was only two buildings here. I think it was the first storage room and the super smelter that he had built here so far, and now there is just so much more here. Next up, we headed off to Megateca's base, and Megateca actually decided to join us to give us the full tour of his base. Hey, Megateca. Figured it'd be nice to have you Hi, give a- hello a tour of your kingdom that you created. I love your uh, new nether portal you created. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, sadly, I did build it yeah, I did build it in the last episode, which means I will barely use it. I manually placed all the bamboo down, and after I placed all of the bamboo down, I was thinking about de destroying all of it and replacing the grass with podzol, and then replacing it. But as you can see, I didn't do that. I got too lazy. Anyway, the entrance to my main kingdom. Woohoo! Yeah, here it is. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, my hundred subscriber statue right here. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. And Congratulations. Date, yeah, exactly. Thank you. This date isn't wrong. This is how I how we in, in England write our dates. J yeah, just it's so you obviously know. May tenth, twenty two. May tenth, twenty two. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> uh, up the street, uh, you have oh, huh. Yeah, this is one of my yeah I I completely forgot about uh, about uh, my, one of my trailers which comes along to my kingdom, uh, the pink sheep, pink sheep. Exactly, exactly. I have no words. It's fine. He's one of my uh, my customers. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Uh, his his name is um, Sir. Okay, let me let me think it. Um, uh, uh, Sir, uh, Sir Julius, Sir Julius the Third. Sir Julius. Love so it. Julius the third, he comes from the. I don't know actually. I don't know where he comes from. He just exists. Oh. <laughs> okay. It's funny. I love that you have these little alleys between the builds. Yeah, and you can probably see most of these buildings are diagonal, which I challenged myself to do this season. I'm definitely not doing next season because this is too much hassle. <laughs> too much of a hassle. Yeah. Okay. So now, uh, main 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 uh. Uh, castle over here, up in it. Oh yeah, and this irrelevant uh, build site. Let's in just construction. ignore it. Yeah, exactly. In construction. Uh, the original design for the castle was supposed to be more of a tan shape, a, a tan colored castle, which I uh, sad well, it sadly got deleted in uh, when the creative world was reset because it glitched out. I think, mm -hmm. if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't save it in a schematic, so I rebuilt a completely different castle, and I quite like it. And it, and it took me a bit of time to construct, but yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, fun fact: there's no door, there's no interior, there's no door. You can't enter in. You're skipping the best part of this, and it's if you fly straight up in the sky. Oh yeah, I completely forgot about this part. And you look down at the castle. 
It's in the shape of a heart. Yeah, exactly. Which may or may not have been intentional. After Megateka's base, we made our way over to the Frost King Mindless's base. This base is absolutely incredible. This is the home of the Frost King and it truly looks like it. There are so many different buildings in here, so many pavilions, custom trees, so much going on here. This place is really, really cool looking. And this server is not just builds and fun, there's also some lore on the server as well, primarily that uh, was about the Arkenstone. And over here we have some of the lore that was built in with the Arkenstone. And so he had to find the Stone of Ages to be able to try and bring balance to the Arkenstone. And you can watch Minus's video about it. Uh, it came out a little while back, but really goes into detail. And it's a very well done, very well edited video. Very cool. Up on now. So we have the Frost King here. And of course, an amazing Frost Kingdom wouldn't be complete without a giant statue of the Frost King himself. This statue really goes well with the rest of the kingdom. It looks so cool. This whole place really does look amazing, and the most recent build that was done on it was this mansion up on the hill here. This was uh, the final build in this kingdom as the Zetacraft Season 1 server is over. But the good news is that Season 2 has already begun and some of the first episodes are already coming out. I'm going to link everybody who was part of the Zetacraft Season 1 server down below, and then you'll be able to check out all the new videos from there. If you thought the builds on Season 1 were cool, definitely wait until you see what's going to be happening on Season 2. The server has only been up for about a week at this point, so they're still very early on. But Season 2 is going to be bigger, better, and longer. The plan is for it to last about a year, so everybody has a lot of time to build some really amazing things on the server. The next base that we went and toured was Dio Sills underground base. This thing had so many little very cool details. It's completely overgrown mostly with all the things that you'll find in the lush cave and it's even got this secret room down at the bottom where Dio Sill has put his 200 ancient debris for his 200 subscriber special and also some of his other valuables like his diamonds. And if you remembered, he had a fully enchanted diamond armor skeleton in the last tour. Well, this skull base over here, built by Ricky and Time, where is where Rupert ended up being later on in the season. Next up, we headed to Hypnojo's underground base. Everything below this level that we're on right here was completely dug out by Hypnojo. He created all these different lava caves and everything down here that look amazing. Of course, there is a giant statue as well. All this scaffolding is up right now uh, because he was working on uh, covering the roof of this place in Deep Slate as well, uh, so that the whole thing had the same blocks and vibe. And of course, that giant statue at the end now also has something else above it too. But first, let's go ahead and check out this super cool library that's in here, which has now been covered in torches as kind of a small prank. But back over here where that uh, giant statue is, there's now a huge hole that goes up through the world to the overworld up above. This space is super impressive. I definitely would not have the patience to dig out all the deep slate in order to fill in that cave. Next up, we have Maya Quest Base, and this thing is absolutely insane. This is an elven kingdom, and we explored a lot of it. Most of it was built last time we were here, but there are some new things that are really cool. So he's the one that made the giant geode nether portal. And if you kind of look up into the sky, you can see there's a glass compass rose. And if we come over here, you can see the map that Maya made of his area with that compass rose up in the sky as well. This is just one super unique and cool idea that I've never seen before on any other Minecraft world. I love seeing that compass rose idea. It's just so interesting and unique, and it's definitely a massive project to be able to build that entire thing in the sky. There are of course some new buildings in this area as well. This is one of them. This is such a cool build and also home to the coolest enchantment table setup that I've ever seen. Lots of drip leaf and different uh, azalea blocks to really make that thing. And this is just such a cool base overall. It also has some summer homes similar to Geek's base uh, that we went to earlier in this episode. 
Also a massive kraken just kind of coming out of the water right here and down below you can find its eye as well. I'm not going to show you guys the inside of these vacation homes or down beneath because I really want you guys to go and find the world download for this world which will be in the Zetacraft videos down below. And I think that will really conclude our season one world tour right there. There's so much done. The world download will be made available soon, and but definitely check out the world. It's going to be so cool to be able, have people be able to go through and see it all. And important to note, season two is right around the corner, and a circuit almost average will be joining us for that season. So I will be joining Zetacraft season two over on my personal channel, which will be linked down in the description as well. Uh, this video is also a little late coming out so two things have already happened the world download has already been released for Zetacraft season one so you guys can check it out and Zetacraft season two has already started I haven't personally uploaded a video but you can find some of these season two videos already from people like Geek Squeak and you can expect videos from the rest of the Zetacraft members very soon, so go check out their channels down below. That concludes the world tour for season one of Zetacraft. It was an amazing server to tour, and I'm super excited to see what all these guys are going to be building on season two. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.